Hello there. Welcome. So glad you're here. Another episode of the Nonprofit Show, and we are raring to go. We've got Jennifer Oliva, CPA and managing partner with your part-time controller with us today in the hot seat. As she mentioned in our green room chatter, we have had many of the team members from YPTC join us throughout this year. And they'll be back next year. So don't worry, they're they're staying with us. But uh, Jennifer's here to talk about year-end review and what you might have missed. So we're going to dive deep in this conversation and kind of give you a, a recap. But before we do, we want to remind you who you're seeing or possibly listening to. So hello to Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. And a quick shout out, I just had nonprofit nerd uh, trademark. So I'm really excited to own that nerdiness and, and really excited <laughs> for that. So yeah, big, big things ahead. We wouldn't be where we are without the great support, the investment, the trust and respect from our amazing presenting sponsors. So a huge shout out of gratitude to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at the National University. Be Generous, your part-time controller, again, where Jennifer joins us. Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and the Nonprofit Nerd. Do yourself a favor and us, as well as our sponsors, check these companies out. They are amazing. And I always like to reiterate that they have one mission. That mission is your mission to help you elevate your mission in and around throughout your community. So check them out. Do yourself a favor. Consider working with them in 2023 because they are here to support you day in and day out as you do the good work in your community. And hey, I mentioned we have 700 episodes coming up on that actually right wow. around Christmas Day this month. Yeah, really exciting. But if you did miss any episodes, including those with uh, Jennifer and her teammates from YPTC, you know where to find them by now, but that's Roku, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, Vimeo, as well as podcasts. So go ahead and queue us up wherever you listen to your podcast. So check us out there. I know we've had quite a bit of downloads and we're looking to hit the, the top charts of the nonprofit uh, show for those podcasts. So thank you to our sponsors that allow us these opportunities. Jennifer, we are so thrilled to have you back here. You've been with us um, really from the very beginning, bringing, you know, breaking news as we are live, because again, these are live episodes. Again, Jennifer Oliva, CPA, Managing Partner, at your part-time controller, welcome. Oh, hello. It's great to be with you again. Yeah, yeah Jennifer, we, we count on you for so much information. Um, and one of the things that I really have learned from you and and it's been observational and i just mm -hmm. want to share this before we get into you know our conversation today is that i think that we need in the nonprofit sector to stop thinking about our accounting providers as just kind of like ledger oriented information about do the books match what the bank says right yeah. that we need to to start looking at them as folks that can be part of our overall strategy and our strategic health moving forward. And so what we're going to talk about today is not necessarily accounting, but it is, right? Yes. And so I'm so intrigued by how this um, dynamic, I'm going to call it, has, has moved us forward, I think in a really, really good way. And the yeah. first one that is kind of surprising is cybersecurity. Yeah. When uh, first of all, thank you for saying that and bringing that up about uh, accountants and specifically your part-time controller not just being a number cruncher. We uh, partner with our organizations, with the non uh, nonprofit executive directors, with boards uh, to help them with all things uh, surrounding the business of that nonprofit. So we we talk about things that are transactional. Yeah, the, the transactions that we do, making sure that the debits and credits are right, making sure uh, our organizations have fantastic fantastic financial information on which to make decisions. But then we talk, also talk about the transformational uh, things that we do with our clients, making recommendations on all things, uh, not all things, but things that we can help them with, that we can get information for them and provide them direction on uh, about their business and, and transform the organization in uh, many, many ways. Mm -hmm. It's so it's so interesting, and I and I know that Jarrett and I have talked about this, um, 
you know, a lot of times you all, you know, in the accountants, uh, accountancy world, see things first mm -hmm. and then the implications mm -hmm. that become financial. And, and one of those is cybersecurity. Yes. Yes. Yeah. About that, because I think that's not something we would think that our accounting providers can be leading, leaning in on. Well, I, I'll tell you what we see and everything comes through the accounting department that all the transactions. <laughs> And that's what I love about accounting. You get to see it all. And uh, that's why my father said, be an accountant. You get to see all aspects of business. And uh, cybersecurity is one of them. And when I think about it, I think about the, the fraud around cybersecurity. And that's where we see it in uh, the nonprofit accounting world. And in September, I talked to you guys about some frightening frauds and about uh, a couple headlines where uh, criminals uh, sent bogus emails to organizations, either asking them for uh, money uh, it, or setting, being um, setting up this fictitious vendors uh, to have the organization send them money or uh, posing as American Express to hit up employees for their login information in order to, you know, um, steal from their accounts. So, you know, headlines abound, they continue to, and there's electronic threats uh, all over the place. The FBI reported that $43 billion has been lost on schemes um, called social engineering. And if you remember, I, I talked to you about phishing, vishing, and smishing. <laughs> right, right. You did. And I looked up in Webster, Webster Dictionary. I was like, are these legit words, Jennifer? Yeah. <laughs> phishing is uh, the email frauds. Uh, vishing is telephone scams. And uh, smishing is uh, by text. So um, when you have electronic bill pay, you're paying by wires and HCH, and that's where cybersecurity and accounting really connect. Um, that's where you really, really have to uh, be aware. So I have some, I have some tips. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, and I want to remind people too. So uh, again, you can go back to our archives. This episode, we're really highlighting some of the things that you've might've missed in this 2022 year end recap. Um, but that is a, a definitely hot topic. Just this morning, Jennifer, I got an email with an attachment of an invoice, which I know I've not done business with this person. And I thought there's no way I'm opening that, but what I'm going to do is pick up the phone and call them and say, exactly. you know that there is this email going around. And if in fact, I have done business with you and that slipped my mind, yes. <laughs> you don't yes. even talk about exactly. that that's, that's my biggest tip is if you're getting these phishing emails is to never uh, react to them and, uh, you know, send in, send money and funds uh, on just an email alone. You, of course, have to pick up the phone and confirm maybe even face to face with the person that they are actually asking you to send funds. And then really when uh, vendors call and or and or send an email or a text saying, hey, our uh, bank account information changed. Uh, can you change that for us? You got to confirm that because what uh, these criminals are doing is setting up fake bank accounts within your vendor names, your legitimate vendor names, and having their payments go to the wrong bank account. So set up these policies, uh, make sure that they're followed, make sure your IT company or your internal IT staff is involved, make sure that you have training for your staff. Um, we have a, a, a routine where our IT provider sends fake phishing schemes mm -hmm. to our staff yeah. to see if they click on them. I and know. Oh, if you uh, click on them, then you get extra training. <laughs> yeah, that's and really before we move on to the next piece of this, um, YPTC, you all have some great training modules within your own website, right, that, that yes. actually talk about this. So, um, again, as Jarrett mentioned, you can certainly get back to, you know, art through our archives, but definitely I would check out YPTC's um, uh, piece of that as well. Yeah. So we have a whole series of webinars. I'm going to mention the different webinars that go along with these topics as well that we have done this year. Uh, this one on cybersecurity slash fraud, because they are very interconnected, uh, is called Fraud Trends and Anti-Fraud Tips. And you can see it at YPTC.com. Awesome. I love it. Let's get on to another thing again that maybe we wouldn't think that this is something that our accounting partners would, be, would engage with us yeah. in. 
outside of accounting. And this is succession planning. Jarrett and I talk about this a lot. This is the world that Jarrett lives in with her um, interim work that she does. Talk to us about what you're seeing and why we need to be thinking about this in, in partnership with our accounting process. Yeah, that's a great big deal for everyone in the nonprofit world and accountants. So I'll get to that too. Um, in June, I talked about on this show, uh, the great resignation and what I call the great reevaluation because a lot of people are reevaluating uh, the work, uh, their jobs and the way that they work. Um, the fact is that baby boomers are retiring in record numbers uh, and the there's just not enough Gen Xers, Ys, Zs, uh, millennials <laughs> to fill all of their roles. Um, I, um, the Society of Human Resources Management uh, also says that uh, nonprofit executives are retiring 60% faster than others. So nonprofits have a special need uh, for succession planning. Um, the uh, Chronicle of Ph Philanthropy in May had this article called large numbers of nonprofit leaders are stepping down uh, and the competition to find new ones is fierce. Um, the article notes that burnout is a big contributive factor to nonprofit turnover. And uh, the fact is younger staff uh, that we, we've seen this, uh, don't desire to do it all like others have in the past, at, you know, wear the multiple hats, work the crazy hours. So there's a big gap in, um, you know, those that are retiring, those that are just voluntarily leaving the nonprofit world, whether they're executives or others, uh, and those that are ready to fill their shoes. And it's really bad for accountants. Uh, very scary. Uh, there are the number of accountants retiring is astronomical, uh, but the number of accounting students and the number of CPAs, uh, people taking the CPA exam, are all decreasing. So uh, we really have a big gap there as well to fill. Our friend, uh, Geraldine Dressler, our Director of Strategic Partnerships has written an article, be on the lookout for it, uh, regarding the shortage in nonprofit, nonprofit accountants specifically in um, the council or the nonprofit, um, National Council of Nonprofit newsletter. It's coming out in January. So take a look for that. Well, yeah, we'll have to take a look for that. Uh, Geraldine's been active on our Q&A. So we see you, Geraldine. Thanks for joining <laughs> us here. Um, I, it just makes me think also, we need more Ellie's, right? Ellie Hume on your team. She knew from a young, you know, little girl that she hey, wanted yeah. to be an accountant. Um, yeah. And so I love that story too. And as we talk about, you know, STEM and STEAM in our, in our programming, that is just a perfect story. And I still, Ellie, I still see a children's book with your face and name on it. <laughs> I love that. And, and I try to um, just always talk positively about accountants. Accountants get a bad rap. We, and we talk yeah. Poorly sometimes about ourselves. Oh, you know, we're just counting numbers. Uh, we're boring. There's nothing fun about accounting. And it couldn't be like further from the truth. I mean, we, as I mentioned before, we see everything. It's exciting. And I always say accounting is awesome. So yeah. it's kind it. of like HR. I have a dear friend who's in HR and she's like, you know, we show up one way we have to, we have to present in this, you know, manner at work, but you better believe we're some fun people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I love I, that. So I, I think for succession planning, like developing a plan, having a plan that might include um, in the interim or longer term uh, outsource solutions like your part-time controller or like interim executive solutions or like the work you're doing, Jarrett, you know, it, uh, interim executive uh, solutions. David Harris was on your show earlier yes. this year yes. as well, yes. a friend. Uh, so, and we did a webinar on this topic, uh, succession planning back in the summer. And so see that at our website site. Um, lots of great tips on what to do about succession planning, but it's really important to focus nonprofits on the burnout part of uh, why people are leaving as well. And a um, couple tips here, and I just attended this week, it's called the Digital CPA Conference. And you're like, how do you, how are you <laughs> equating burnout with the Digital CPA Conference? But a lot of it had to do with um, exciting people uh, in the workplace. And the one speaker called 
uh, it said, um, create a destination workplace. And I just love that term. I thought you guys would love that term, uh, a destination workplace, uh, you know, being the place people want to be. And then this other um, author and one of the keynotes, Marcus Buckingham, a great author, uh, he talked about designing work people love. And generally, designing work people love in the nonprofit world is is kind of easy, but you still have to be intentional about building your culture and making it a great place to be, mm-hmm. making sure that you have the right value proposition for your staff. Is it salary, benefits, time off, flexibility, right? Um, and then focusing on employee well being. And these are all things that we do at your part time controller um, as an intentional way to um, uh, attract and retain staff. Uh, but it has to be. It has to be for everybody. And, and I, I really, I'm a big preacher of, of uh, intentional culture yeah. and um, also uh, making great opportunities for your, your staff, whether, you know, create um, clear career paths. Yeah. And um, I talk about that with, uh, on my podcast, Mission Business, and it's coming out soon. I have a lot of these coming out soon and you have some, <laughs> some that happened, but on this the works. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> We, Anne- we can appreciate this, Jennifer. Yes, yes. We can appreciate this. Anne Marie Gray uh, is the executive director for one of our longtime clients, USA for UNHCR. They're an organization that helps refugees around the world and has grown tremendously over uh, the last few years. And uh, she talks about um, building teams on this podcast in a, in a really wonderful way for a nonprofit and also talks about succession planning because she's uh, uh, leaving uh, the organization in the near term and, and talks about a great plan that she she put together. Good. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, let's move into our time is going by so quickly. Oh, quickly. Let's move into federal awards. Now, yeah. I mentioned earlier, Jennifer, you've come to us literally with your phone, you know, right next to you saying, this just in breaking news from, you know, federal federal um, updates. So talk to us about federal yeah. awards as they relate to our organizations um, yeah. and the impacts of that. Yeah. So when I was talking, when I first started uh appearing on the nonprofit show, we was talking about PPP nice. loans, uh, paycheck, paycheck protection loans, and other um, COVID-related funding relief for nonprofits. Um, there's so much more out there for nonprofit organizations, and YPTC is really um, taking a gigantic focus on that. We started, we've always had a focus on helping our organizations uh, manage their federal awards um, because there's a lot of management that is required from making sure that the accounting's right, that the reporting back to the funder is right, that the audit uh, that often, uh, if you're receiving a lot of federal awards, you're going to be subject to a special audit and getting them, getting our clients ready for those special audits. But now uh, we are actually helping our clients um, find and apply for federal funding. This is a new service line that we're providing. And um, we kind of announced it and uh, um, introduced it at last week's webinar that we did uh, all about federal funding, where we talked about half of the the webinar was talking about um, applying for finding and applying for federal funding. Mm -hmm. And the second half was uh, about uh, how you manage them. Uh, So it's uh, it's a great one. We actually had over a thousand people sign up for it. um, 600 over 600 people uh, uh, were there uh, for the live in the live audience, and they all stayed to like the very end. So Love clearly, it. it hit a nerve. So uh, I think Love there's it. a lot more of that going to come out from us, and then also um, you know you can see the the recording of that webinar on. Our so are you writing the grants for them? Are you helping to prepare the financial? Like, what is your? So we will be helping. Uh, organizations find grant funding specific for them and helping them in the the writing. Now, I don't know how much writing specifically we'll be doing for them, but we will be helping uh, guide and um, support them in that process. Uh, So we have a new uh, person that we hired in charge of uh, that department, our federal funding department. His name is Derek Dreyer, and I'd love to have him. uh, He'd be a great guest for you um, next year. And he is a former executive director. He's not an accountant. 
So there you go. There's the connection of the federal yeah. words and non accounting and, and as we talk of federal, and we don't have time to go down this rabbit hole, Jennifer, but that yes. in and of itself comes with so many others, right? Like the single audit that we have yes. to talk we had a fantastic, you know, member of your team join us to talk about that. Um, so there's so many things to consider um, yes. when you consider federal funding, the compliance, the, you know, the reporting, the management of all of that. So let's get him. You said his name was Derek? Derek Dreyer. And he, and he was one of our clients way back when, oh. one of our very first clients wow. uh, over 30 years ago. And I did want to ho- hopefully have some time to talk about our 30th anniversary. So uh, okay. in 2023. Okay. Um, Big stuff. Well, yeah. let's move into da- data visualization. So hopefully yes. you'll have some time for the 30th anniversary plug. Yes. That yeah. is another, I, I have nerd nerded out over this topic. In fact, I have the great honor of working with some of your team with uh, several of my clients actually. And it's just a lot of fun because I get to see different personalities. Talk to us about data viz or visualization as you like yeah. to show. So everybody is short on time. They, and we're all used to seeing snippets of information on which we make decision er- decisions every day um, and in seconds. So uh, data viz is all about getting the right information in front of the right people at the right time in the right format. Mm -hmm. And um, visualizations, you know, it can be useful for internal purposes, uh, executive directors, board members, and it's just not financial, only financial information. It's all about, you know, the business information, the KPIs, the um, programmatic information, your fundraising information that goes to all members of management, as well as your board. And then it can be used for external purposes to help um, tell your story the best way possible to your funders. So it's, it's, it's really an important uh, aspect to the whole picture of telling the organization's story uh, to your stakeholders. Now you have an entire data viz team, is that right? We do. We do. Led by Bill Schwab, who has been yes. on the show a few times. Right. Yeah. And Bill is just terrific. And uh, our data visualization team helps us in, in many, many ways. Uh, one way is uh, to help support our client service teams to, to create the information the best way possible for every single one of our clients. The other way is uh, we can support organizations that aren't even our clients uh, in uh, many ways. If they just need data visualization help, uh, they can reach out to our data visualization team. And a great way to get started with that is to check out our website. We have our own, um, our data visualization has their own page on our YPTC website. So if you go to yptc.com slash data slash Dash, uh, dash visualization. Yeah, right. We'll be able to see all kinds of examples and cool yeah. things that we have done, and hope inspire um, your organization to um, it's, what what can you do? You know, well, it's really a great page because what it does is it takes information that I think a lot of times board members or even partners would just kind of like gloss over or they would hear numbers and it wouldn't really register. But when you look at that page and you see how you've articulated different data points into these graphics, it is remarkable. I mean, I think it's really where we need to be going. And Jared, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, I was just going to give a shout out to Bill. He was such an awesome guest. You know, the way that he presented himself with the data visualization opportunities from YPT, C is really important. So I know we're mentioning a lot of things in this episode because that's exactly what it's for. It's that recap, (laughs) Um, but really just another plug that you can absolutely go back and listen or watch that episode that is focused specifically on data visualization, how you can provide this to your board. And even as Jennifer just mentioned, external stakeholders. So that's, that's really important. We had a question from a viewer. It goes back to the federal grants, Jennifer. So we're kind of jumping back, but I wanted to address this for our our guest. Um, Will this initiative provide assistance with developing the budget? So will YPTC help with the development of the budget? Absolutely. We've always done that. So that's not, so there's, there's really on the development of budgets, on understanding what the reporting requirements will be, on helping organizations in their application process, uh, on the audit uh, facilitation uh, for a single audit. Uh, that is things. Those are things that we're already specialists in, and we've been doing for 
30 years uh, at your part-time controller, Eric Wilson. Uh, I think that's who you were alluding to before that was on the show just, I think, a few weeks ago, yes. uh, yeah. talking about federal grants. So we have that expertise and had that expertise on our uh, staff for a very long time. The new part is, is finding and um, finding the right awards for the organization and then uh, tailoring the story uh, for the application. So that's, that's really the new, the new part of it. Right. Well, and we're, again, I'm working with a client that has received lots of federal funding. Uh, so in, in the matter of 18 months has jumped their operating budget about $5 million. And that comes with a lot of federal funding, that compliance piece. And our YPTC person is really the critical, you know, stop gap to making sure that that funding comes in, that we're doing our management for that. So it really is, I mean, I'm not getting paid for this, but it really is a lot of play. And it is just so wonderful to have that person on our team team. Um, it is just, I mean, it brings so much confidence to, to all of us. So, um, so yeah, definitely check into that. So that wraps up our, our key points. So now's your time, Jennifer, uh, tell us a little bit about this 30th anniversary. We've been in business 30 years in March of 2023. So we say we're in our 30th year now. So uh, we're going to have a year long celebration in 2023 starting actually now, uh, internally, we have our annual awards next week, and the whole theme is uh, 30th anniversary, going into the 90s theme. That's a lot of fun. Uh, but we, we're really uh, reflecting on the past, uh, as well as um, focusing on the future in, uh, for our 30th anniversary celebration. So um, Eric and I, uh, Eric Frank, our founder and president, uh, just recorded uh, a mission business podcast that uh, will be coming out, I guess, in January, uh, where he talks about the history of the firm and uh, goes into why we work with nonprofits uh, all, you know, through the story of, you know, what brought us here today to a firm of over 500 people across the country. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. And, and I think people will really be interested in hearing uh, from the horse's mouth how it all got started and uh, what, what we're all about today. Um, we're also going to be telling client stories uh, all throughout the year and celebrating our clients, and which uh, of course is the, the most, um, along with our staff, the, the most important thing about your part-time controller are nonprofit clients and the missions that they serve and, and how they uh, interconnect with the work that we do at, at your part-time controller. And then our staff celebrating them uh, for the, you know, for, all of 2023 so oh big big <laughs> congratulations that is thank quite you. the milestone thank you for your thank service you. and, and all that you do in and around our community we're so very grateful uh julia let's pop up jennifer's um uh, contact information again i want everyone to reach out to yptc check out the website check out these webinars that jennifer has so beautifully peppered throughout mm -hmm. today's conversation yptc.com is the web address that you want to check out jennifer it's been a pleasure i know that we are going to have you and uh, we've already tagged derek deanna i mean a couple other <laughs> yeah, into next year so thank you Jeremy, right. um yeah for that well, as we wrap up today's episode, we of course want to thank our amazing sponsors that allow this opportunity for all of us to um, have these conversations. So again, another huge shout out of gratitude to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Be Generous, your part-time controller, where you heard it from Jennifer Oliva here today, <laughs> Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, as well as the Nonprofit Nerd. So grateful each and every day to have the support from these sponsors. None of these episodes are scripted. We have the conversation point and we literally fill up our cup of coffee. Um, you know, sometimes it's coffee, sometimes it's water, but having a conversation and um, these are a legitimate, casual, organic conversation. So thank you for being of service. Uh, thank you to all of our sponsors and of course to Jennifer. And thanks to all of you that show up day in, day out, or maybe even watch the recordings. We're so very grateful to have you here as part of the team. We have a huge lineup. Uh, that that will kick us through uh, our end this, you know, through this year and then next year, quite the lineup uh, there again. So thank you for joining us. It's been amazing. Jennifer, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
you're a beautiful representation of Eric Frank's vision mm -hmm. um, and your team is amazing. Jarrett and I get to work with them in our community um, on the other side of the country and they're always just lovely. So thank you, thank you. Hey, everybody, as we end another wonderful episode of The Nonprofit Show, we look forward to more and more uh, guests coming to us with their thoughts as we end up the year. We want to remind ourselves, our viewers, our listeners, our guests, to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everyone.